handoff. Adrian up the middle, Rome to the 20, cuts to the left to the 25, and Adrian's loose! He splits the defense! 50, 40, 30, goodbye, baby! Touchdown! We bleed purple, and our bones are gold. Hear the horns coming out of our dome, behold. We are Minnesota Vikings fans. Hello there, Vikings fans. You are listening to the Purple People podcast. My name is Kyle West. I am accompanied by Adam Pac-Man Carlson. Uh, Howdy. Don't know why I went with the Pac-Man reference. Do you, do you like the game? I was a big fan, actually, when I was a kid. I'll tell the story real quick before oh, yeah? I go into the introduction. Um, I was with my parents in the grocery store, and I was a little fry, and... Video games were pretty new. And I was obsessed with Pac-Man at the time. So we we were at the store, and my folks put some toilet paper in the grocery cart. And I threw the toilet paper out and said, Pac-Man, yes, toilet poppy, no. (laughs) So yes, I do like Pac-Man, or at least I did a lot. Well, there you go. That's the kind of insight that that you can only find here at the podcast. (laughs) So no toilet oppy, but now that I'm older, you got to have toilet oppy. Every now and then. Every now and then. <laughs> but I'd like to welcome everyone to episode 77 of the Purple People podcast, which I know I say it every time, but it's hard to believe that these numbers are getting that far up mm-hmm. there. I've titled this week's show, Fool's Rush Flynn. Okay, I don't... I would have went with a Tron reference if it would have been me. You know, I would have called it like Flynn Lives or something. Oh, come on. Matthew Perry, Selma uh, Hayek, Will's Russian. I don't know. I'm, I'm a big Tron fan, so I, anytime I get the opportunity to, to talk about that movie or movies, I will do so. That and Matt Flynn sure played well at the end of that game, like I, which we are here to talk like about. Like I said, Flynn know. lives. At least for one game, because it's the Vikings. <laughs> You'll suck next week. Let's go right. Let's go into the quick hit. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about Let's that. Let's do it. Yeah, the Vikings are going to, well, not the Vikings, but the construction crew, (laughs) are going to break ground on the new stadium in December. Be nice to see. I'm excited. I keep checking out the pictures, and it looks like it's going to be one fantastic place. So, so excited for the new stadium. We were just talking about the the seating difference, how the new stadium is going to seat more, and just, oh, just look all around like a nice place to visit. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad I got to see a game in the old stadium before it will go down. So Me too. I might not make a game at TCF, but I'm definitely going to try to make a game at the new stadium as soon as possible. I'm going to try to go to TCF just because that's going to be a weird kind of footnote in the Vikings history. So Absolutely. I go, go early in the season before it gets too cold. Good yeah. idea, good yeah. idea. Yahoo Sports put out a report saying that they believe that Adrian Peterson is in decline already. That he is losing his touch. That he's not the running back that he used to be. Hmm. I, I, I see where they're coming from. Um, wouldn't use the word decline. I think it's horse hockey. I think given all the situations for this yeah. year, everything that's happened with him, fighting through the injuries, the subpar mm-hmm. play from the offensive line. If you want to read a full diagnosis of how I feel about... That article, go to the Viking Age and read my article that I wrote because I, I didn't hold back mm-hmm. really. I didn't. Uh, we got to see Audie Cole get his first start at Woo! linebacker. That was pretty fun. It was. Uh, we're excited to see Audie Cole finally get a chance to step up to the plate and see what he can do. Absolutely, especially after he was released earlier this month. That's kind of mind blowing now to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll probably save more Adi Cole talk for once we get to the defensive breakdown of the show, but, uh, Absolutely. a lot of fun to see him out there on the field in a starting position for sure. Well, the Vikings are down another cornerback. AJ Jefferson has been released after being arrested on charges of domestic abuse. Mm-hmm. And not good. It took basically no time for that to happen. Um, it seemed like as soon as it broke on Twitter that he had got arrested, it was a, a matter of no time. It was breaking that he got released from the team as well, too. So 
Yeah, I mean, he must have been on some pretty thin ice there to start with. And for that to happen... Lack of production, it was the kind of... I don't know if I'd say lack of production. Well, I think in the limited role that he's been in, he, um, he's he got one of the only interceptions that the defense has. Yeah, that's true. But I would I would still say the general lack of overall production and the fact that, you know, the, the nature of it being a domestic... Um, assault case. That's not really something that Rick Spielman or the Vikings are willing to put up with. Um, it, it, not saying that Jerome Simpson, uh, that the DUI is any better. Like I don't want to compare the two. Like that don't make any sense. But I think Jerome Simpson has more talent, and that's why he stuck around. Ex- exactly, more. he he does more for the team. So unfortunately, and the AJ Jefferson thing was a project to me. Um, mm-hmm. They they put forth a low draft pick in the trade to try to bring him in and see because he wasn't that bad in Arizona. Yeah, so they wanted to see if they could find a role for him in Minnesota. They struggled to find a role for him, and now this happened. So really, it's time to wash their hands and. There really wasn't any loss. This late in the season, I doubt any other team's going to pick him up. Um, well, especially now, based on what what's going on. So there's always the possibility that if they want to, they can talk to him in the off season. Maybe give him another look and another <laughs> shot. I thought you were going to say talk to him in jail. Yeah, talk to him in jail, but no, talk to because he is being held without mm-hmm. bail. Talk to him in the off season, depending on what happens with this case, and maybe he comes back in training camp in Mankato next year, but. You never know. Now, I thought the Vikings would sit with one roster spot open, but they decided to fill it with offensive lineman Mike Remmers. Now, Remmers is a former Tampa Bay Buccaneer and Denver Bronco. Charger. Didn't he spend some time with him? Yeah. Sure did. He's bounced around quite a bit. He was an undrafted free Mm -hmm. agent. Uh, And to be honest, I think he will be on the team until Harrison Smith is cleared to come back, and then he will be gone. I know absolutely nothing of the guy. Um, his name didn't ring at all familiar with me, so I can't really comment too much on him. But... I wrote a nice article mm-hmm. about him for the Viking Age, so... We'll always need to... I'm willing to give the guy a shot. If he can impress and make an impact on the squad, that's awesome. You never know. You never know when you're yep. going to find that next diamond in the rough. And my very last quick hit is today, we are recording this on Monday night, Mm -hmm. is Jarius Wright's birthday. Happy birthday, Jarius Wright. That's right. Uh, Let's go into our game ball and our donkey now, because this is another part of the show that I really love. Yeah, this is fun. I look forward to this week in and week out, Um, especially the weeks where I I really feel like you have options on both sides. And this is one of the, well, you don't really ever want to see options on the donkey side. But I, <laughs> I. But there always. Yeah, there, there always are some. But I feel like this week we have like legitimate options on both sides to pick from. So this is going to be fun, fun to see who. All we right, go right. For. I will lead off with both my game ball and my donkey this okay. week. Okay. And both of them are in the defensive secondary. Oh, all right. My game ball goes to Xavier Rhodes. Yes. Now Rhodes stepped up and had a humongous game. Mm-hmm. He he took a hard hit when he hit the ground. But he came back and played well again. Xavier Rhodes proved to me. Sorry, Xavier. I, I keep doing that. <laughs> Xavier Rhodes proved that he can be a full-time starter in this league, even at his young rookie status. And he has so much room to grow and develop. I think the Vikings really got a gem here. Oh, please stay healthy, Xavier Rhodes. Um, that is the one thing that I want. If I could say to him, it would be that. It's just please stay healthy for this team. Um it was sort of his coming out party for the Vikings uh, this week against the Packers. And I, I, I really feel like they used him correctly um, for the first time. They played to his strong suits this week. And I don't, I thought I favorited um, on Twitter the number of targets and deflections that he had. But it was a really good, he, he did a good job. And, uh, only going to have a bright future for the Vikings, and I, I like it quite a bit. Now, my donkey, I hate giving away the donkey award because I wish I never had mm-hmm. to, but Robert Blanton, you're on my donkey for the week. 
bad coverages, dub, d- really dumb penalties that hurt the team, gave up first downs when it should have been turnover on downs or punting situations, mm-hmm. and really, really just didn't play well. The sooner Harrison Smith gets back, the better. Absolutely. Yep. All right, let's hear your game ball on Donkey. Okay, um, my game ball, I'm going to give it to Toby Gerhardt. And I've been waiting for the week that I can give Toby Gerhardt a game ball. And we finally got one. I am, I'm so <laughs> excited to be able to do that. On eight attempts, the guy had 91 yards, uh, the longest of 26. When he was in there, him and Adrian, Adrian too, um, it's... He had, you know, 32 for 146 and a touchdown oh, yeah. on the day, too. So Adrian had a good game, but both him and Toby were just absolutely gashing the Green Bay Packers. Um, I really liked how they were using both Adrian and Gerhardt in this game. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Vikings run game was on fire. That is something they need to look to do full time in for the Vikings. I know you don't want to not give Adrian his reps, but at the same time, I think it's beneficial for Adrian to have Toby producing on the field as well too because it Absolutely. it takes wear and tear off from him. Okay, that's going to prolong his career. I also think it's going to help him help motivate him psychologically not that adrian is the kind of player that needs extra motivation but he is a guy that you put him on the sidelines and i think he sees toby go in and get 15 yards on a run eight yards nine yards 10 yards on these runs it's like you can kind of see it in his eyes when he's on the sidelines adrian wants to get back out there and he wants to he wants to one-up him and that's a good competition to have and I, I want to see them continue doing that. I'm wondering if the Vikings are trying to get Toby Gerhardt some carries so that he'll want to stick around. Uh, I I would be fine with that um, because we know that they – typically they use Gerhardt on third downs, um, pass protection, uh, because that's right. kind of his strong suit, as well as uh, you know the third down kind of check down screen passes. Um, they will do to him, right. but definitely get him involved more often and for entire series. Um, maybe not an entire series, but you know, a couple, a couple stretches of plays um, out there right. on the field. Let him do it. Put him in situations like that and just let him do it. Now we had plenty of other guys to choose from for the game. Audie ball, Cole too. would have been. Audie Cole could have very easily got one. Adrian Peterson could have very well got one. Even Christian Ponder was somewhat eligible for yeah, one. Yeah, he was. Um, there were plenty of options. There were. My donkey for the week, I am going to go with Chris Cook. Um, even though I, I'm just not seeing it from Chris Cook. And I'm seeing him give up. It never fails. He gives up a big play that goes for a big first down or a big touchdown or whatever. And you always see the back of his head not even moving and trying to look and see where the ball is. And it's just it never it never fails. He just never seems to be in the right spot. And it's just for as long as he's been with the team and I know he's been banged up or had other issues that have kept him away from the team for periods of time. I'm just not seeing what. I feel like we should be seeing from Chris Cook at this stage in his career. So I agree. Chris Cook has all the talent, yeah. the physical attributes that you want, but he just can't put it together. Yeah. I mean, Xavier Rhodes outplayed him. Oh, yeah. I mean, he he outplayed Chris Cook yesterday. There's no way around it. Uh, now, I understand that you have a social media question. We haven't done one of these in a while. We haven't. Um, so I decided we would do a social media one. Uh, asked people on Facebook the question that I guess Adam wasn't too big of a fan of my question. Uh, no, no, I wasn't. I like to keep things interesting and, you know, not always throw the same stuff out for you guys. 
So who would you guys rather have as the Vikings starting quarterback in 2014? Christian Ponder or Mark Sanchez? And I'm only going to read a couple of these um, just to kind of let you guys get a feel for what we had. Um, Rick Jacobson said, Ponder! Exclamation point. Uh, I seriously think a lot of his issues are the play calling. No QB has had any sort of real success. Ponder does honestly show some signs of improvement, but still struggles running running plays not designed to his style. I actually agree with Rick on that one. Yeah. Um, Pretty intense. Then there is the flip side of the equation. Uh, Allen said one phrase. I guess this isn't really the flip side. This is this is a ponder vote too, but uh, it was funny the way he worded it. Uh, Allen said, one phrase, butt fumble sums up Sanchez's career with the Jets. So I would take Ponder also. Um, here's this guy. This guy was on your – Coleman was on your side. Is why the heck would you even have that question? Like how do they – how do they – Yeah. I, how do they even compare? Uh, my logic with this was to just have some fun and throw out two names that no one – wants on the team so that's it's like not everything has to be 100 percent serious uh, my last answer that i'll read is we had uh one one vote for sanchez uh justin came on and said as long as he's a placeholder picked by our new by our new head coach to give our newly drafted quarterback johnny football maybe time to get used to the nfl so yeah i could I could see that, although I don't think that that would be a situation that Sanchez would want to want to enter. But you, you never know. It's true. It's mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I'm not sure that I'd want either of those guys leading a team into next year. I a top range rookie would be best, but I take Tim Tebow or Denard or yeah, I... Denard Robinson. <laughs> Hey, you are a glutton for punishment for asking that question, I gotta tell you. Oh. Hey, how about Iowa beating Michigan over the weekend, Adam? I don't know. I don't watch that. Uh, it was awesome. I, now that you tell me, I know what happened. But <laughs> yeah. Don't really have players from either school that I've been scouting yet. You should be. The Vikings should look into B.J. Lowry. Um, he's cornerback from... University of Iowa. He's a guy that could go potentially undrafted or in the late rounds, but he would be worth coming in and giving a solid look in Mankato in training camp. He's a guy that I believe in, uh, just based on what I've seen. There's your early scouting report from from me. <laughs> yeah, Kyle West likes guys from Iowa. That's, hey, that's pretty much the scouting report. Screw AJ Jefferson. We got Sean Prater on the team. Uh, he had an awesome, <laughs> awesome play on special teams. Um, so he's going to step right in and fill in the role that what's his nuts just evacuated the team with. And what's his, what's nuts? his nuts? Screw him. He ain't on the team anymore. Sean Prater will do great. Hawkeyes <laughs> represent. Let's Adam. hope. Well, let's go right into talking about the offense. Now we talked a lot about the running mm-hmm. game, which was awesome. We saw Adrian Peterson, Toby Gerhardt, uh, Christian Ponder did not get into the action. Really. He had three rushes for negative five yeah. yards. So that didn't help out the run game, but Adrian Peterson and Toby Gerhardt, man, they had big games on the ground, and it looks like that might continue into next week because the Vikings are taking on the Chicago Bears, who are really struggling in containing the run. If we're going to win football games or if we're going to look competent on the football field, you got to give the ball to Adrian. You got to give the ball to Gerhardt. We got to run right up the gut of the opposing defense and that's going to set up play action. And that should set up for a couple passes that Ponder can do. And I think that should be pretty much the game plan for the remainder of the season for the team. Uh, Ponder himself had a pretty good game. He did 21 for 30, 233 yards, one, one touchdown Mm -hmm. at a quarterback rating of 103.9. He did have that one pass that he was very lucky was not a pick six. He, and I I shake my head every time a play like that happens because I know that he knows better. He has his ponder passes. That uh, This is what's frustrating about him 
is he has his ponder passes, like you said, that almost pick six. That just yeah. it's like, oh, you cringe. And you go, how do you not see that linebacker standing there or that corner or like what? Why? Why are you doing that? And then he can a play later. He can fit a ball in and you go, wow, that is like actual big time <laughs> legitimate quarterbacking that you did right there. And and let's be honest, we saw Ponder misfire a couple times on long passes, but in the clutch when he needed to, he delivered balls that were dropped by some of the wide receivers. Greg Jennings had a huge drop. Um, that you cannot overstate that one enough. Cordell Patterson had two of them. That one was tipped, though. That one of those was tipped in the end zone. Well, the the, the first one, the one where they went deep to him. Um, yeah. For one thing, play calling. I know we all want to see Cordero Patterson go deep, but when we are gouging the Packers at the rate that we were gouging them with Gerhardt and Adrian, and we just needed to run clock out at that (laughs) specific moment in time. Why are we? It's not a good time for a hail. Why are we doing that? Like, really? Can't you (laughs) hand it off and run some clock out? Like play calling. Come on, man. But, uh, that one sucked. And then the one in the end zone, uh, wasn't, was that the one that was tipped? Yeah, that was, that was the tipped one, but still, man, Cordero, if you're going to wear 84 for the Vikings tipped or not, you got to reel that in, in the end zone. Like you, you've got to, got to do that, man. Um, and let's talk about another guy that I almost gave my game ball to. It's a guy that everyone that listens to the podcast knows that I love. Chase Ford? Rhett Ellison. It was great to have Rhett Ellison back on the football field. He had some key blocks on some of those runs. He had two receptions on two targets, which I always love to see, 100% catch ratio, for 26 yards and one touchdown. This guy, he is one of the most underrated pieces of this Minnesota Vikings team. He is... The new Jim Klein saucer, maybe not as physical, but he's got softer hands. And I think this guy will be part of this team for a long, long time. Give him, you just got to give him a couple seasons under his belt. And I totally agree with your Jimmy Klein saucer analogy on him. Uh, Was I the only person that when Chase Ford caught that one pass went, wait, Chase Ford? (laughs) <laughs> I, I forgot he was on the team. That's cool. That- I actually got a text from my friend Clint saying, look at 86 there with that catch. It's like, hey, that's Chase Ford. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, I know. Um, but we saw Greg Jennings. His only missed catch was that drop. That was. Uh, he had two catches for 29 yards in his return to Lambeau mm-hmm. Field. I bet you he was hoping for something a little bit bigger, more significant, but. I guess you do what you do, but he got outproduced by a gentleman wearing the number 89 jersey. Mm-hmm. And by that, I'm talking about John Carlson. Three catches, 36 yards. The man just keeps getting footballs and making catches. John, Car- what he John does. Carlson equals production. Yeah, Cordero Patterson was targeted 11 times in this mm-hmm. game. 11 times. He caught eight of them which in itself is quite good. He tied Jerome Simpson for the most yards in the game, yeah. receiving with 54. I believe in the press conference after the game, Leslie Frazier said that Cordero Patterson is a starter. Yes, um, I was going to bring that point up. Um, I'm glad you did, though. Uh, he did say that Cordero is the starter, is a starter now for the team, uh, which is which is good. Uh, Vikings, uh, the Vikings fan page, I talk to you all the time on Twitter, I uh, was discussing good group of guys. Check yeah, out yeah, definitely chance. was discussing Cordero and one of the knocks on him out of um, coming out of college was his ability to track and, uh, you know, track a ball coming to him. You yeah. know, after he gets separation, the down the field passes um, was not his strong suit. And that has continued to be the case so far for the Vikings. So I know we all expect him to be uh, the guy to stretch the field, but that's that's his point of improvement right now. That is why you're seeing the Vikings uh, 
Uh, 10 yards seems to be the magic number for him. Anything less than 10 yards, he appears to be really good at catching. And anything after <laughs> anything after 10 yards is when he you see him drop it, generally speaking. Um, but I like the team trying to use Patterson's speed and elusiveness. Well, Get the ball in his hands and let him do some work. And this, it's like they did last year with uh, with Percy Harvin. When Percy Harvin was starting off with that monster mm-hmm. year, there's no reason Patterson can't have that kind of production. Precisely. And this is the same uh, the same thing for Patterson here. Also goes for Audie Cole in that you can only have a guy running up and down the field on special teams and working in closed door practices so so much. Before they really kind of, you're not doing the player any justice at that point. Like you, you, you got to get him out there on the field in their position. In the case of Patterson, running routes and running deep routes and doing the whole the whole route tree uh, for him to learn learn how to do that. Even if that's not exactly his strong suit. You got to get him because that's going to be the best way for him to do it is to get him out on the field, make him run it. Maybe there's drops that suck, but I really feel like the best way for him to learn is to get those drops on tape, get him out of the way now. Hopefully he learns from it and is able to correct that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about Audie Cole, so let's move over to the defensive side of the ball. Let's talk about Audie Cole and those seven it's seven yards of loss on tackles for a loss. Let's talk about the 11 solo tackles. 13. The two assisted tackles. Mm-hmm. The sack. This guy was all over the field. Mm-hmm. He was making plays. He was disrupting traffic. He got in the quarterback's face. He was doing everything on the field that you want a middle linebacker to do. Mm-hmm. And the team should be taking a look at that play and the struggling that has been going on in that position by Aaron Henderson. And they should see that maybe Audie Cole is getting looked over Well, in that starting race. Uh, and to be, to be fair, um, there were plenty of missed tackles and other things that, that he did, so it's not like he played a 100% perfect game. But no. overall, I think, all things considered, he had a really good performance for the Vikings. That pl- I would love to see Adi Cole stay at the middle and Aaron Henderson move to the outside. Thank you. I think that is what they should do. That is where Aaron is best at, and Adi can fill in and do I I really believe just as well as what Aaron has been doing. So what what would that hurt to make that move right now? Like I don't It's honestly worth a try. I, I mean and they've got those young guys that they're gonna be developing and working in as backups, mm-hmm. getting more reps, trying to learn what they have there. For now I think that is the best system they have, which is probably why the Vikings won't go with it. <laughs> I know. They'll they'll move Aaron back to starting middle linebacker and Audie Cole will be regulated back to running around on special teams again next week. The only other player with a sack in this game was Brian Robison, who, which I always like seeing him because I like the reel in a man. I, I love that. That is that's better than Jared Allen's down on one knee rope dance that he does. I love that <laughs> bass fishing thing that he does. And you see now he's even picking it up and like, oh yeah, picking it up and like measuring it or something. It's it's. Creative as hell. I love that sack dance. It's always mm-hmm. nice. Uh, Chad Greenway, eight tackles, one assist. You can always count on Chad for some tackles. He's a tackling machine. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw two passes defended by Kevin Williams, which you don't usually see that out of the big yeah. fella. That's more than most of the secondary had in this game. I mean, Jamarcus Sanford had one. Chris Cook, zero passes defended. But guess who had, who defended four passes? One of them was a touchdown. That's that's Xavier Rhodes. Yeah, you betcha. Um, it was like I said earlier in the show. It was his coming out party for the Minnesota Vikings. Absolutely, starting level talent for sure. Mm-hmm. Makes you wonder why wasn't this team doing this? Oh, gee, I don't know. Like five weeks ago. Like why? <laughs> why wasn't he starting then? Like it was. 
Why, Adam? <laughs> to be honest, I have no yeah. idea. Uh, we saw a weird assortment of players in the secondary. Everybody seemed to get a shot. A lot of guys were struggling. This Vikings defense really gave the ball gave the game away in the fourth quarter. They had a huge lead. And at the end of the game, I firmly believe that the Packers thought that they were going into double overtime. There was no sense of urgency. They weren't moving the ball at all. Yeah. I was looking at my sister the whole time and I was like, they know that if they don't score it's a tie, right? I I don't know. Um, I, it it appeared that way because why would the final play was the final play that Matt Flynn was? No, the final play was Christian Ponder throwing that screen pass when they needed a touchdown. Oh yeah, well not I mean not not for us, but the the <laughs> final we'll talk about that in a minute too. Um, the final play for the Packers was Matt Flynn running around or something, wasn't it? Scrambling with the uh, I think it was a short drop off pass, but I'm not I don't 100% even, I don't even remember. Uh, that game got weird and depressing and just all around horrible when it hit overtime. It's like up until that point, all things considered, it was a fairly watchable, fairly serviceable game for a game that featured Christian Ponder versus Matt Flynn and Scott Tolzien. Um, like, yeah, I mean, it hit over. How do the Vikings give up 16 points in the fourth quarter? Oh, you know, and then almost shut them out in overtime after the field goal. <sighs> this defense needs to find itself and be more consistent because I don't know. I'm just glad that I have blood pressure medication <laughs> to take. Otherwise, I know that I'd have had a couple heart attacks by now. Yeah, I, I agree with you Um, for as much praise as we gave Ponder um, earlier in the show for, you know, looking halfway decent, whatever. Um, Ponder in overtime, as well as with the rest of the team, was confusing and just riddled with bad decisions. And yeah. overall, kind of... Eh. No NFL game should end in a tie. <laughs> like, I, pr- uh, pre I mean, these aren't two elite offenses and defenses going against each other head-to-head, smash-mouth game. No, this was watching ineptitude at some of its finest. It was. But still, it's like a tie. Like, they... Have you seen that meme that's going around with the picture of the Green Bay guy with the helmet on, the shirt off, and the stickers over his nipples that says... um, It says... They say a tie is like kissing your sister. Let's tie more often. <laughs> I haven't seen that oh, often. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible yet kind of funny. I can't mm-hmm. help it. I was so desperately hoping that the Sunday night game between the Broncos and the Patriots would have ended in a tie. Because if that would have ended in a tie, guarantee you NFL competition committee would have changed the rules to where there would have been no more ties. <laughs> like, if seriously, if that game would have went ended in a tie, that would have been a riot. Now, like you said, it well, it matters more for the Packers than what it does for us. But now I got a weird question for you. Okay. Okay. The, the Packers punted. The Vikings got the ball. It would have been about a 70-yard free kick. A 75-yard free kick or so. Mm-hmm. I I let Blair Walsh try it. Um, If it would have been inside in a dome, I, I, I definitely would have tried it. Being outdoors, I've always heard that in the cold, it has something to do with... But did they really think a drop-off pass to Cordero Patterson was a better option than trying that kick? Uh... Boy, it's such a toss-up, but... It's not a toss-up. Well, Cordero Patterson, <laughs> it, we've seen him do really good things on kick returns, punt returns, whatever, with the ball, making people miss, whatever. So I do understand. And, I mean, he did... He made a couple people miss, and it wasn't like it was 
I mean, it was wasted because but we then didn't... he didn't try lateraling. He didn't try. Well, there anything. was no one around him to lateral the ball. He still got to try. So, well, to who? What? To anybody? There was there was no one around him for him to lateral the ball to. I mean, I... yeah, this was a poorly planned, poorly executed. Well, that's the that's the Minnesota Vikings in a nutshell, right there. Poor, poorly <laughs> planned and poorly executed. But I, I don't think I would have tried the kick just based on them being outdoors in the cold. Um, but I probably could have tried to dial something up better than than that. Heck, put Josh Freeman. Oh, Freeman was inactive. Put Matt <laughs> Castle in and let him throw it as hard as he can towards the end zone. Something. Yeah. Anything. I, a dump off pass? Come I on. I would have tried that. I would have just had Patterson, Jennings, and I don't know. Do we have another receiver worth a shit? Simpson, Jerome Simpson. Just have. Joe Webb's pretty tall and fast. Yeah. Jim, what? Rodney Smith's pretty tall and fast. I, think, I think he was inactive. But anyway, have three of them bunch up and run to the end zone. And like you said, have Castle come in for one play and try to try to just give it try a to ball. bomb it down. I mean, I would have tried that as opposed to what they did with Patterson. Yeah. I don't understand the end of that game. I don't understand a lot of it. Yeah. Or maybe it's really frustrating, but maybe next week the Vikings are going to be taking on the bears in Chicago mm-hmm. and uh, it should be fun. Should be an interesting game. Oh no, it's not in Chicago. My, my apologies. This game is in Minnesota. And we will see Christian Ponder, quarterback, once again. Mm -hmm. And the Bears will once again be without Jay Cutler. And their defense is ripe for the picking. They can be ran on. This is a game that the Vikings do have a chance of winning. And it's sad right now that a lot of the Vikings fan base is cheering for losses, hoping for draft picks. I I can't do that. I I can't. I don't care, and I don't want to get into too large of a rant on this, but you can you can find a quarterback in the later rounds. I mean, where was Aaron Rodgers drafted? Or would it hurt? Okay, everybody wants Johnny Manziel, it seems. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want Johnny Manziel, he's probably going to be the third quarterback off the board after Teddy Bridgewater and Marcus mm-hmm. Mariota. So if you have the number four, number five pick, you're probably going to get him. So I don't know why these Manziel fans want the Vikings to have the number two pick because they're going to end up with whoever doesn't get picked, Bridgewater or Mariota. Yeah. I don't know. They'll end up where they end up. Rick Spielman's a mad scientist. If we're, if, if they want... One thing we know for sure is that he won't be afraid to move up to get a guy he wants. If, yes, if they want a player, they will get that player. OK, if they believe the Johnny football is their franchise guy that's going to lead them to Super Bowl rings in the future, they're going to get him. Now, I want to end because I assume that we're pretty close to done. Yep. Uh, talking about Adrian Peterson next game against Chicago. Now, Adrian Peterson is 20 carries away from having 2000 career carries. That's a lot of carries. It sure is. And he's 154 yards away from joining the 10,000-yard club. It's a lot of yards. So those are two things to look forward to with the Bears game. Keep track of those things because those are both pretty big milestones for the Vikings franchise running back. How many yards did you say? 150? Uh, 154. 154. It's definitely doable against that run defense. It's struggling bad. It is. But all right, I would like to thank everyone for listening. Thank you for taking your time. Visit us on Facebook and Twitter. Check me out on the Viking Age. Uh, check out our friends at the Vikings fan page, both on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for listening, and stay classy, Minnesota. We bleed purple, and our bones are gold. Hear the horns coming out of our don't behold. We are Minnesota Vikings fans. We love when a player scores. We roar, ignite the stands. We bleed purple and our bones are gold. We're the kings of the north, our slogan stole. No packer, no bear, no lion can beat us. We will punish anyone if they try to defeat us. He's the MVP. A 
appreciate it greatly Running all day, 2K, that's AP Make a defense cry, or maybe beg ACL stands for Adrian's crazy leg He's the heart of the team 28 holding up that Lombardi is a part of the dream We will never give up We find the faith to move past